Welcome to the Building Newfoundland and Labrador podcast, dedicated to exploring the interesting journeys of the people in the provincial construction industry. Presented by the Newfoundland and Labrador Construction Association, produced by Gale Force Winds. Join us as we chat with the inspirational individuals that ensure the continued growth of the construction industry and the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. Good. Welcome to the Newfoundland and Labrador Construction Association podcast. I'm Alan Dale. With me as always, my good buddy, Jerry Carew. This is day one, women in construction. We are stronger together is the theme. We are certainly happy to be in conversation. The Minister of the Government. Pam, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi there. Well, my name is Pam Parsons, and I'm the Minister responsible for Women and Gender Equality. And I'm the MHA, the member of the House of Assembly for the District of Harbour Grace, Porter Grave. And uh, we had a little chat prior, and you asked me, of course, about my earlier career. And uh, well, I was, of course, I, I was, I grew up in Spaniards Bay. Um, and following high school, I went on to Mount St. Vincent University, where I compl- in Nova Scotia, yeah. neighboring PEI, where I uh, completed my degree in political science. And following that, I went on to do broadcast journalism in the Annapolis Valley, and I, where I majored in broadcast, actually broadcast journalism. And so I'd done that for some time uh, here in, actually I worked as a student in the Valley, in beautiful Nova Scotia, and uh, then I got hired to come home to work for CBC Here and Now, and I did some radio work, some television work. I was then offered a position at Rogers TV Out of the Fog here in St. John's, and, at the, and then I, t- my journey took me to Owen Sound, Ontario where I was the producer for First Local News uh, wow. for Gray County at Rogers. And of course, I wanted to come home. It was always my plan you know, to go and get my experience, my education, but I want to bring, always wanted to bring my skills and my education back home here to Newfoundland and Labrador. And um, I wasn't there too, too long. And I was offered a position at NTV News here. And so that brought me home, of course, and I was really happy to return home. And I was there for some years, and I, when I took the plunge into pol- political life, which is something that I always wanted to do as a child um, in high school in particular. I knew I'd always want to get involved, and uh, so I did. And here I am. I was elected for the, to serve the District of Harbour Grace, Port of Grave in 2015, and I'm very grateful to be re-elected, re-elected for the third time to represent my constituents and to be appointed as Minister for Women and Gender Equality. Uh, Minister, wow. Normally, um, <laughs> people say they're nervous to be on with us, Now I'm a little bit nervous to be on with you. <laughs> so there That's you okay, go. Alan. Settle well, down, settle okay. down. <laughs> so, Minister, tell me about your portfolio. Why is that important and why should we pay attention to that? Because it's pretty topical on Women in Construction Day. Absolutely. And uh, the portfolio, and I'll first start off by saying that it's we now have an expanded mandate. Uh, the, the, the portfolio was formerly known as the status of women, but now the Premier has expanded that mandate and made it a standalone office uh, and it's called Women and Gender Equality. And that mirrors our federal office as well. Mm -hmm. So we have an expanded mandate, of course, to advance women, uh, but also members of the 2SLGBTQQIA plus community, gender diverse people. So it's very exciting and as we can appreciate what's happening here today, uh, we're seeing a movement, if you will, um, I guess over the last few years. Women are standing up for themselves, um, they're calling out bad behaviors, they're calling out harassment, um, and you know, women are demanding to be treated equal, as equals, and so we should. Um, we just had celebrated Persons Day back in the 1920s, where women finally got, you know, were recognized as people, not all women, I will say, indigenous women took longer to get there. Um, but we've made leaps and bounds with progress, but here in 2022, we're still making bounds and leaps today as well. And we have to continue doing that. And the onus is on all of us as women, and of course as men who support women. Mm-hmm. What an incredibly important portfolio, Alan. Oh. What do you think? It's got to be one of the best, for sure. Uh, women in construction is the theme of uh, what we're talking about here today. They um, striving so hard to lead this conversation, to be an inclusive workplace for all not just women but as you say for all for an all. inclusive workplace for all tell me the importance of that in the construction industry specifically well absolutely and and i just i was i'm honored to be here today actually to bring greetings and to speak to this group today and when i re- walked up to the podium i was taken back you know it's an amazing room you know a room full of strong women gender diverse people i think one of the organizers said their goal was 100 i think there are 107 women in there 
today. So I mean, that's amazing. And um, and it, it, and again, it comes back to equality. We know traditionally it's mostly men that work in construction and, and the skilled trades, but we're we're seeing progress. Uh, we still need to do more to get more women involved and and to to make them feel comfortable and and and, and I guess confident to go for these non-traditional careers because we know they can do it. We know we can do it. Right. And uh, also something very important that I spoke about actually uh, when I reflected here in my greetings is that to, to come to Newfoundland and Labrador to do business, you must have a women employment plan, right. equity plan. Um, so they, they, these are just one, that's just one initiative that we're doing to get women and gender diverse into the workforce, into these non-traditional roles, and to be paid equally. Mm -hmm. And I'm also happy to say, um, while we're talking about the topic, um, just recently, for the first time in our history, we brought in pay equity legislation. As Minister Responsible for Women and Gender Equality, I led that um, with my, my colleagues, the Minister of Finance as well as the Minister of Labor, of course under the direction of our Premier, um, to bring in pay equity legislation for the public sector uh, with private for private and uh, pay, pay equity for the private sector to follow upon consultation, as well as pay transparency, which I know you have in PEI yeah. for both private and public. So it's 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 these tools that get us to a more equal, you know, Newfoundland, Labrador, as well as an equal Canada. It's nice to hear that. Yeah, it's it's surprising that it had to happen through legislation, but at least it's here in the now, right? Yes. yes. Um, it you know the key to success is when government industries and academia they all work collectively together yes. for the benefit of their communities clearly the government's leaning into this Absolutely. would you agree Absolutely, and you're right. I mean, you said it right. When we're working together, we achieve the greatest results. Yeah. And when people are given the opportunity, uh, to, you know, to contribute in, a, in an equitable way, they have more control over the choices they make, and ultimately, it's a better contribution to society. And we have a stronger province, a stronger economy for that. Now, the Newfoundland and Labrador Construction Association, lots of members, lots of people doing great things in Newfoundland and Labrador, great opportunities on the horizon. I mean, I listen to the Open Line show every morning mm -hmm. from people. PEI. Oh, great. Uh, and I know how many Wonderful. opportunities exist right here in Newfoundland and Labrador. Tell me about the importance of an association like this to you as a Minister of Government. Again, I think it's, it's, it's a team. The way I look at it, and every time I speak, whether it's here in my district or whether it's to stakeholders, ultimately we're a large team here in Newfoundland and Labrador and, we're, and we all need to work together and collaborate. And as, as we just said, when we're working together, we get the best results. So it is really inspiring to see organizations such as these because not so long ago we didn't have them and now we do I mean even just the conversations that we're having around the table in there this how inspiring it is listening to how women got to where they are today we have a we have a very talented panel that's in there speaking right now and everybody brings their own experience and their own education and their own anecdotes to the table and I mean that's how we get stronger and we need to see more women at these decision-making tables because as we know uh, it, it makes for a much more healthier table I would agree with you and I have two young nieces they live in Halifax and every time we have a woman on our podcast I, I send it to them because I want them to have examples to look up to, and I think you're one of those. Oh, well, thank you so much. Oh, truly I, I, inspirational. I appreciate that. Thank you Yeah, so much. truly inspirational conversation here today. You know, uh, everybody's in the hunt for talent, right? Everybody needs employees, and there's a real challenge right now for human resources. What would you tell people that are... Uh, perhaps away from the island and looking at opportunities to come back. What well, would you say to them? I think I know. I know without you know for certain, and I'm very confident. I mean, Newfoundland and Labrador, we are resource rich, um, with, within mining, uh, within wind. Actually, now just in advancements that we're making there, lifting the moratorium on wind power. Um, so you know. I believe in it, and you go anywhere across Canada, and I said this in my speech, when people find out you're from Newfoundland and Labrador, they know you have a reputation that you're a hard worker. Mm. And I believe maybe even women are even give it that much more, because you know, there are different challenges and experiences we've had to make it to the top, as compared to our, our male colleagues and whatnot. So this is this Newfoundland and Labrador, I, I, I'm, I was happy to go away from my education uh, to Nova Scotia, where I went to university and college, and then again to travel to Ontario to get some work experience throughout my career. But I was very eager to come back home here. And this will always be home, and this is where I'll always want to be. I believe in Newfoundland and Labrador. I believe in our people. We have, those are our best resources. And the strides that we are making as a government, of course, in partnership with community. 
What's the secret sauce here, Minister? Because a lot of good things seem to be happening here in Newfoundland. What is the secret sauce here? Well, what do you think it is? I always say, you know, our people are our best, our best resources here. I mean, look no further than the, the famous Come From Away Broad, mm. Broadway musical that was featured on, on in New York for so long. Right. Um, you know, and what Newfoundland, how, how we stepped up during a time when the world was in crisis, when an unprecedented attack happened during 9-11. Uh, so I, I believe in our people. And I mean, you can go anywhere in this province, whether you're from here, from this province, whether you're from somewhere else in Canada, or from somewhere else, wherever around the world, and people are ready to receive you, to welcome you, and to ultimately help you on your journey, wherever you're going. You know, you bring up the whole point of pride, and uh, a friend of mine once said, he said, you're, you know, that whole comment about pushing above our weight shouldn't be said anymore because it has an inherent conversation around, well, maybe we're not worthy. What I love about talking to you is obviously none of that matters. You know, there's pride and we're pushing forward. And uh, again, it's just a, a really positive vibe coming from you. No matter what political stripe you are, we're behind what you're doing, I can tell you that. Thank you so, so much, I appreciate it. And you say that uh, you believe in the people. Clearly the people believe in you. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm very grateful for their support and their confidence. Yeah. Sure. Well, that's Couldn't be great. here without them. Yeah. We certainly appreciate your conversation. I know that you're a busy person, a minister of government, taking time out to speak with us on the uh, Newfoundland and Labrador Construction Association podcast. It means a lot to us. And Thank you. your leadership, specifically in uh, inclusion of people, I think is vital, so important right now. You're doing honorable, honorable work. So thank you very much for your service to our province and indeed to our country. Thank you so much, and thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you for tuning in to the Building Newfoundland and Labrador podcast, presented by the Newfoundland and Labrador Construction Association, produced by Gale Force Winds.